Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever loves me will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me tell, tell you, I am going away and I will come back to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it happens, so that when it happens, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, once again, I want to welcome you and... Uh, say how wonderful it is to have you all here with us celebrating Mass uh, uh, this morning. And um, if perchance, if just by chance, some of you are visiting, we want to say a special warm welcome to you. We say this every Sunday, but it has kind of more meaning and more significance these days, especially um, now that we're celebrating the Labor Day weekend and we're beginning the summer season. Um, because, of course, Spring Lake attracts a lot of people who love it and like to visit in the summer. If you're one of those people, uh, great to have you back and uh, hope we'll see you frequently during the summer. Um, it is like summer out there, isn't it? I mean, you know, it, it, it's true, you, you hear, we comment frequently, you know, we go directly from winter to summer. Well, apparently today is, is summer. Uh, I understand it's going to be up in the 80s. Uh, uh, this afternoon, so I think the water is probably a little chilly still, but um, the sun is great, makes you feel good. Well, um, you know, uh, we don't know a lot about Jesus when he was uh, when he was a teenager, when he, when he was growing up. We know we, we we know about what happened when he was 12 years old, and his family went up to the big city, and he got lost, and and. Um, um, but mo mostly we don't know anything about him, you know, for, we don't know how he was as a kid growing up. Um, well, a an author wrote a story one time, it's a purely an imaginary story, ma made it up, um, about Jesus when he was a teenager. This, this is kind of a whimsical story. Um, now, he's living in Nazareth, and he's 17 years old, um, and he's working with his father, who's a carpenter, of course, and one afternoon, um, he's out in the town and uh, a Roman soldier comes along um, and says to Jesus, I want you to carry my pack for a mile up the road. Roman soldiers were entitled to do that in those days. People, um, they could compel people to carry their gear, you know, for a mile. It was all laid out. Um, so he's surprised when Jesus cheerily agrees to do so. And as they walk along, and Jesus is carrying the pack, um, they start talking and chatting, and Jesus is very curious about the life of this uh, young man as a soldier, um, uh, and wants to hear about all the armed conflict and, and the wars and, and so on. Um, and and uh, then Jesus expresses the opinion, which sounds like a kind of a teenage wishful thinking, when he says to the soldier um, that the only way to get rid of hate and, and, and distrust and war is to take the stinger out of evil. They're the words that he uses. Uh, and the soldier kind of, I guess, chuckles to himself and says, well, how are we going to do that? Um, and Jesus tells him about an incident 
where he's playing a game with a bunch of his friends and, and an argument um, breaks out um, and Jesus says, you know, he decided that keeping the friendship was more important to him than getting, re than getting revenge and punching back at the guy who had, who had uh, uh, confronted him. So he turns his cheek and he tells the, the other kid, okay, hit that side too. Um, and the other kid was surprised and embarrassed. He dropped his fists and apologized. And then Jesus says, well, that's one way that you can take the stinger out of evil. Well, when they come to the end of the obligatory mile, um, Jesus offers to walk another mile and carry his pack for another mile, uh, to the amazement of the soldier. He says, you've got a long way to go, because um, he, he was going on furlough um, back home um, to Joppa, the city of Joppa, to see his wife and family. And uh, so, um, at the end of the second mile, uh, the soldier says, you know, I hope I run into you again sometime. And Jesus responds, well, if you're ever in Nazareth, look us up. You'll always be welcome in our house to have a meal with us. And as he leaves, the soldier says, you know, I believe you when you say that. Well, 16 years later, Jesus is hanging on the cross. And there's a Roman soldier, a centurion, who's part of the execution crew. And he's pacing backwards and forwards at the foot of the cross. And he's perplexed. And he keeps thinking, you know, I think I've seen this guy somewhere before. But he can't just put it together. And he can't remember. Then he hears, he hears Jesus saying, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And the centurion remembers, and he knows. Well, it's just a story, of course. But it brings together what you might describe, I suppose, as the, the inside and outside dimensions of peace. There is what we call inner peace. Now, the Gospel today was talking about peace. My peace I leave you, um, uh, J Jesus said to his disciples before he left on Ascension Thursday. Um, there is such a thing as inner peace. We all know that. We, ca we tend to locate it in the heart. Um, and everybody wants it. Everybody wants to have peace of mind and peace of heart. And then, of course, there's the uh, other dimension of peace. Peace amongst ourselves. Peace amongst other people. P peace between people. Peace between a Roman soldier and a teenage Jew. Peace within families. Peace between races. Peace among nations. And the Gospel today talks about God's wish of peace for us. And he talks about his vision that we live in peace with ourselves and with one another. Do not let your hearts be troubled, he said, and do not let them be afraid. He talks about peace within ourselves and peace amongst us. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world gives it. And you can draw a couple of conclusions from this. Number one, and it's kind of obvious, but we have to say it anyway, you can't make peace in the world if you don't have peace in your heart. And of course you can't have peace in your heart without making peace with the people around you. In the Sermon on the Mount he said, Blessed are the peacemakers could translate as peaceful are the peacemakers. The inside, the inner dimension and the outer dimension of peace are connected. Making peace with our neighbor is closely connected with experiencing the peace of Christ within us in our hearts and souls. And I think most people would agree that the more immersed you get in the world, the less peace of mind you tend to experience. Because living in a world where there's so little understanding and peace between peoples and nations and groups, it's hard to have the inner peace, the inner experience of peace that Jesus often talked about. You see, you can't have peace in your heart when you use other people for whatever reason. You can't have peace in your heart 
when success is so important that you're willing to see people as expendable. You can't have peace of mind when you play believing that winning is everything. You can't have peace in your heart when you live just to be happy, when you can't keep commitments, when you can't deal with the truth, when you can't live by faith, when you can't live by love. And in despair I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. So wrote the poet Longfellow. Jesus came to show us the way. He embodies the, in, the, the two aspects of peace, inner peace and peace with the world. He offers us his life, his spirit, his peace. He shows us the way. He always talks about the way. The early Christians always talked about following in the way. Jesus taught us the way. A way, mind you, that is rarely followed even by those who embrace him and profess him. When Jesus is truly followed, people find both peace, people both find peace and make peace. The lives of those who live and follow him always reflect the two dimensions of inner and outer peace. Amen.